This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to revisit one of my earlier projects and I will give it a substantial facelift. So earlier, about two years ago, I designed a circuit board based on the AT Mega 32U4 microcontroller and I'm going to revisit that board in this video. It is a fun to use chip because it carries the simplicity of an AT Mega 328 microcontroller but it has an native USB. Actually this makes it very popular and a ton of people uses this chip for example to build custom keyboards. When placing the two printed circuit boards face to face, the first update is already visible. The new board is slightly narrower. With some careful component placement, the board became narrower by one pitch of a jumper header or 2.54 millimeters. So now it actually fits in a regular breadboard, but the wiring has to run under the board because the PCB covers the wall breadboard edge to edge. Also another design change is that I made the traces slightly thinner to save some space and I made them curved as well so it looks better. Then another big change is the USB connector obviously. The new board has a USB-C connector not because of speed or power but because this type of connector became today's standard and the older micro USB is slowly getting obsolete. I also reworked the areas around the pins I got rid of the silk screen of the connector and I printed all the pin labels on the PCB. I also indicated the three peripherals, SPI with a solid line, I2C with dots and uh, serial with dashes. And then there was a big and ugly push button on the previous version of the board. So this is now replaced with a smaller, slightly better looking one. Then I also revised the power supply part. I replaced one of the tantalum capacitors with a regular ceramic capacitor and I also replaced the fuse with a smaller one while having the same specifications. I also added some easter eggs to the board, because why not? Then the signature is also updated. I had to place it somewhere else because I had to squeeze the components around the push button. So I ended up running some of the traces on the bottom of the board and I put my signature on the top layer. I also made the copper rebuild which then got a nice silver colored plating. So if you flip the board, more differences can be seen. First, the pins have names on this side too. Apart from the regular pin names, such as D4 or A5, I also marked the names of the peripherals, such as TX, RX or SDA, SCL. So now let's see how I assemble this board into an operational microcontroller. But before we jump there, if you want to get your printed circuit board manufactured, please visit PCBWay's website and use their services. Now it is especially a good idea to use their services because due to their 10th anniversary campaign, they provide a lot of discounts and coupons. So head over to PCBWay and check out their offers. Link is in the description.
So I'm back with the completed board. As you could see, the reflow was not so perfect. This is due to the fact that the hot plate I was using heated up the board too quickly, essentially skipping the soaking time. If the solder paste contains too much moisture, water, skipping the soaking time can lead to forming those solder balls that you could see during the reflow process, because the water does not have enough time to escape and it messes with the process. However, after a little cleanup, the board came out gorgeous. I checked all the contacts and pins, there were no solder balls stuck anywhere, so no short circuits, hopefully. If you take a closer look at the boards together, we can see the key differences better. I think it is really easy to spot the key differences, especially the button, the USB port, and the power section with the different fuse and capacitors. So before connecting them to my computer and potentially frying my computer's USB port if something goes wrong, let me grab a USB tester and check the boards. And as we can see it, all the boards performed well. They all consume around 15 milliamps, which is normal. So there are no short circuits, for example. So now let's go to my computer and uh, check how the boards can be used. So when the board is plugged in in the USB for the very first time, it shows up in the device manager. And this is a good sign because it shows that the chip works, but it is not enough to program it directly in the Arduino IDE via the USB connector. So let's go to the IDE. And if I select the board, the COM port, and I try to see what is on the terminal, nothing shows up. Even if I change the board rate to another common value, still nothing. So we need to burn a bootloader on the board and eventually upload our own software to yeah, get something out of the board. So this is actually a relatively easy process, but it requires another microcontroller. I used an Arduino Nano. So after getting an Arduino board, I had to upload the Arduino ISP code to it. And this code can be found in the examples. And then we have to connect the SPI pins of the two microcontrollers together. If you don't know the pins, just look up any basic tutorials in Google and you will see how it is connected exactly. You connect it to two boards together. You are not yet connected to the USB. You have to change some settings in the tools menu. So select the board as your target board. So in my case, I picked the Adafruit's 80 mega 32 U4 breakout because I use the same chip. So the same stuff should work for my board as well. And then the COM port is the COM port of the Arduino, the programmer. So select that. And then under the programmer menu, the setting has to be Arduino as ISP. This means that the Arduino, in my case the Arduino Nano, becomes the programmer. And then just hit the burn bootloader button and wait. The compiler will tell you when it is done. So when it's done, remove the microcontroller and connect it to USB and wait until Windows detects it. And now if you go back to your COM ports, you will see your 80 mega 32 u 4 microcontroller as a COM device. So now we have to create a basic code, upload it and uh, test it if it works. And uh, what we have to remember is that during the uploading process, we will need to press the restart button on the microcontroller. The compiler will let you know when you should do this. And after you press the button, the compiler will finish the uploading process and then you will be ready to use the microcontroller. So then let's open the terminal to see how the things look like. And then it seems in my case that the numbers are printed too fast because I forgot to add the delay. So I quickly added the delay and then uploaded the code again. And now you can see that the counting is easier to follow. And also based on this, you can see that the microcontroller works and the USB communication works. So basically this is it. So this is my revised 80 mega 32 U4 board. I hope you like it. In the near future, I will try to start selling it as a product. So if you want a nice PCB or you just want to support me and have something in exchange for the support, Maybe this board will be something for you. Or if you feel generous, uh, please feel free to support me on Patreon because that also helps me to provide these kind of uh, resources and these kind of projects. And also don't forget to check the description. You can find PCB based promotions and other useful links there. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.